Welcome to a series of Bible devotionals presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at Ephesus, in that opening chapter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places Let's in word Christ. Prayer, please. Our God and our Father in heaven, we're thankful for the privilege and the opportunity to once study again, to open your word, Father, and to learn and to understand your will for our lives. And I pray, Father, you'll bless us this very day as we continue to study from your word as we look at the devotional today that's entitled, I Stand Amazed. And truly, Father, you are amazing. And we pray that you'll bless us as we seek to know and understand your will for our lives. Be with us now as we study together in Jesus' name. And Welcome to the Gatlinburg Church of Christ Bible Devotionals. Our devotional today is entitled, I Stand Amazed. And today, for just a brief moment, I want to look at the promise of eternal life and salvation that is found in Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9, 15, the Hebrew writer says, For this reason, he, speaking of Jesus, is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive, notice, the promise of eternal inheritance. Reed and I have a small book that was given to us in 1993 by a very dear Christian friend when we were living in Pennsylvania. The book is titled, I Stand Amazed. Chapter 4 bears a similar title, I Stand Amazed at the Promises of God. Now, I'll read from that briefly in just a moment. Paul in Romans 4 and verses 20 and 21, Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Now, Paul is writing by inspiration. And he says that Abraham was fully convinced. Other translation says that he was fully persuaded, fully assured that God would keep his promises. Now, you and I live in a world built on promises. Just one example. Most of us give and receive checks in payment of goods and services. When we write a personal check, it is a promise to pay a certain amount of money to someone else. At our individual jobs, when we are paid for our work, it's often we're paid with a check, a promise from a, our employer to pay a certain amount of money for the hours we've worked. At most businesses, some customers choose to pay with checks instead of cash or credit cards. Unfortunately, some of those checks bounce for insufficient funds. That's a broken promise. For you see, some of man's promises are that way, broken, never fulfilled. And there are many other examples of man's broken promises. However, God's promises are not like that. God's promises are sure, always fulfilled, never broken. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord your God, He is God the faithful God who keeps his covenants and his loving kindness to a thousandth generation. For see, God is faithful to keep all of his promises. Do you remember the opening verses of Paul's letter to, to Titus? Titus 1 and first two verses, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness in the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. Let me share with you a brief story from the book I Stand Amazed. It's about an early pioneer days of, of our country. I'm going to be reading from chapter 4, short, short reading. There was a young boy who had walked to school each day through a dense forest. He lived in mortal fear of running into a bear or even wild Indians in the backwoods. Often he begged his father to let him stay home 
but his father wanted him to learn to be brave. So he sent him on his way, and with a pat on his back and a word of encouragement, gradually the boy's fears subsided. Then one day, as he entered the forest, he stood face to face with a big brown grizzly bear, paralyzed with fear. He knew death was intimate, and he stood trembling, and a shot rang out. The bear fell dead. Out of the bushes stepped his father, rifle in hands. It's all right, son. Every day I have followed you to school, and I have been waiting for you each afternoon. I was always ready to protect you, but I didn't want you to see me, for I wanted you to learn to be brave. God is like that pioneer father. He's always there. Not, not visible, but always there. For you see, he promised. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Isaiah writes, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Friend, I stand amazed at the promises of God. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, assures his apostles and us that God knows our every need. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. I'll pick up the reading at verse 25 in Matthew 6. Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, about what you shall put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his statue? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Seek first the kingdom of God. I stand amazed at the promises of God. He will take care of His own. He knows our very needs. He knows our wants, our wishes, our cares, our concerns. Colossians 4, 19, And my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I stand amazed at the promises of God. The most precious promise of all is the promise of salvation and eternal life in the very presence of Almighty God. Isaiah 1 and verse 18, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Receive, I stumble and fall. As best I try, I still make mistakes. You see, I'm not perfect. I sin. I fall short of the glory of God. But thanks to God, Jesus was willing to leave the majesty and glory of heaven to come to earth. He gave up the throne for the cross of Calvary. He came and lived and died for me and for you, friend. He died that we might have eternal life. 1 John 2 and verse 25, And this is the promise which He Himself made to us, eternal life. And when the beloved Apostle Paul writes 1 John, 
He knew we needed the assurance that God's promises of eternal life were sure and certain. In 1 John 5, 13, a favorite verse of mine, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Notice that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You see, we doubt sometimes. That's our nature. For see, we we break some of our own promises, but God has never broken a single one of His promises, and He never will. If we can know that we have eternal life because God's promised that if we walk in the light as He is in the light, then Jesus' blood continually, ongoingly cleanses us from all of our sins. That's 1 John 1 and verse 7. Do you want to live eternally with God? Believe the promise. Trust God. Abraham said that he was persuaded that God could and would keep his promises. Turn with me to 2 Peter this time. First chapter. I'll read the first four verses. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by virtue and glory, by which having been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Today the precious and magnificent promises of God can be yours, my friend. Simple obedience is all that is required to receive the promise of God and eternal life. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, And Jesus said unto them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Paul in his Galatian letter describes those who are on this side of eternity, on this side of the cross like you and I, how we can access the promises of God and eternal life. In Galatians 3, verses 26 and 27, he says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Friend, I know of no other way given in scriptures that we can put on Jesus Christ other than in that simple act of obedience that we know as baptism, as Paul instructed in Galatians chapter 3. God's plan of salvation is simple. You must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and make that good confession, and then in repentance turn from your sins and turn back to God. Jesus' instructions concerning salvation as recorded in Mark chapter 16 have not changed, and they still include baptism, as we read just a moment ago. Jesus' teachings concerning the plan of salvation are not even subject to change by mankind. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. Romans 1, and 16, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it, the gospel, is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. I stand amazed. For you see, in Jesus Christ, we're all sons and daughters of Jehovah God, saved for all of eternity. Friend, if you have questions about your salvation, please contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We're located near downtown Gatlinburg. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the plan of salvation just as revealed in the pages of the New Testament. Thank you for studying with us today. Give me the Bible, Son,